I know if you compare uh, what was happening in Kiev, for instance, and in Kharkiv, those people at least had some kind of chance uh, of survival. In Kharkiv, uh, uh, they were extremely rough. Uh, moreover, um, uh, I managed to find those people who worked for the KGB. They are still alive. Uh, a couple of them uh, didn't mind that I, I used their first and last name, and that's how they were included in this narrative. Two of them... Um, insisted that I shouldn't actually reveal their real names because they were claiming that that's exactly what we were doing uh, because we had this opportunity not to, to procrastinate and to simply eliminate those people who uh, were sort of uh, resistant, who didn't want to comply, who continued to, to write what they wanted to write, who continued to, to say what they wanted to say. And uh, um, just a couple of names um, you know, come to mind. Um, Vasil Bonder, who was killed by the KGB, and Stanislav Shemitsky. Absolutely brilliant writers. And unfortunately, when we uh, talk about Kharkiv writers, uh, broader scholarly communities do not recognize these names. And that's, that's a shame, and probably uh, we have to give some voice, I mean, to, to, to these people and to talk about what they experienced, how they lived, how they communicated, what happened actually. Mm -hmm.